This is our relationship in Him, in the Spirit. That we are holy and blameless before Him. We are adopted as sons to Himself. We have to experience the glory of His grace. We are accepted in the Beloved. We have redemption and forgiveness so that we are wealthy in grace because it's lavished on us. You know, you've not experienced real grace until you've been absolutely overwhelmed by it. Overwhelmed to the point of tears. Speechless at the wonder of it. There are some things in Christ that should make us inarticulate in wonder. Lost. No words. Needing to speak in tongues. Just to release something in us. I think the gift of tongues is given to us because we are supposed to be so astonished, so amazed, that we become inarticulate in our wonder at God. And He knows that we're, something's building up inside of us and we need to release it. So He wants to give us a heavenly language. And the beauty of that heavenly language is the enemy can't understand it. So, bonus... For us to understand there is a spirit of revelation on our lives that is here so that we would know the fullness of His kind intention. He is the most intentional person I have ever met in my entire life. And the kind intention of His will is absolutely enormous. So huge you can get lost in it. You lose your bearings because the goodness of God is so huge, you, don't, you can't see the end from the beginning. You don't know where the height is or the depth is or the length and the breadth of it. You just lost somewhere in the middle of it. That everything in our life must be linked to experiences that contain fullness. You have a responsibility to the world around you to be full, to abound, to be overflowing, so that wherever you are, people are living in the overflow. They are tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, even if you're not even engaged with them. <clears throat> Peter was so full. When the sun was up, his shadow healed people. Come on, think about that for a minute. Peter was so filled with the Spirit, when the sun was shining, his shadow contained his fullness. Doesn't that amaze you? It absolutely amazes me. There is a place in our life where we must sum up all our life situations in the context of who Jesus is for us. Majesty is not an option. It's a necessity. We have a massive inheritance that must be spent in this life. Everything in heaven must be applied to everything on earth. All that He is doing and all that we are becoming is to the praise of His glory. So in the end, the highest form of praise is not what we sing, it's what we live. The highest point of adoration becomes who we are in the earth how we are known in the earth. We are understanding that we are known in heaven. And when we embrace that heaven to earth lifestyle and mindset, the earth begins to know us differently. And they begin to associate us with heaven. And so the cry goes up, the people who are changing the world have come here also. So there is an expectation in the earth 
Miracles are needed now more than at any other time in the world's history. Signs and wonders are needed now more than any other time in the world's history. Healing is required now more than any other time in the world's history. So we must fight this cessationist gospel that says that the gifts of the Spirit are not meant for today. It's a religious devil. It's the doctrine of demons. And we owe it to Jesus to fight it. And the best way to fight it is indirectly through our own lives. We don't need to go up against it. We don't need a civil war in the church. We don't need to label people, but we must fight that spirit. And the only way to fight it is that you become a place where people can taste and see that God is good. Amen. That your lifestyle, <clears throat> that your belief, your faith, your trust in the fullness and the abundance of God leads you to keep on saying, hey, if you're sick, I'd like to pray for you. And we have an expectation of glory coming down into our midst. And that wherever we go, people know stuff happens around those people. 